கலகே சுந்தராகாரம் சதைக பிரிய தர்ஷனம் அஜானநாசகம் தேவம் சத்குரும் முரளீதரம் வித் இமன்ஸ் பிளெஸிங்ஸ் ஆஃப் அவர் பிலவட் குரு மகாராஜ் மகாரண்யம் ஸ்ரீ ஸ்ரீ முரளீதர சுவாமிஜி அண்ட் பை த காஸ்ட்லஸ் மர்சி ஆஃப் ஸ்ரீ மாதிரி சகி சமேத பிரேமிக்கவர் த தாக்கூர்ஜி வி ஆர் ஆல் எக்ஸ்ப்ளோரிங் த ஒண்டர்ஃபுல் வர்சஸ் ஆஃப் கலி தர்ம உந்தியார் and the first mangala charanam as blessed by our beloved guru maharaj is muttolil purindum puriya adirkum mudalva sharanam undi para mukti ki vittiduvai undi para in that our swami ji says that bhagavan who is having a name and a form the name of uh, bhagavan is also eternal the form of bhagavan is also eternal and with that bhagavan actually creates sustains dissolves this universe and yet because he is not getting affected by all these three deeds which he does he is de- he has done these three deeds yet he has not done it if you want to understand how it is possible even a gnani who has been a jeeva because of sadhana becomes a jeevan mukta then he himself even though he eats he does not eat if he walks he does not walk why because there is no ownership or i am doing this type of an ego in that gnani so whatever action a gnani does itself we say even though he is doing he is not doing imagine this is the state of a jeeva who became a gnani what about bhagavan so bhagavan even though he creates sustains and dissolves this universe and he is not affected by it the least and it is uh, for leela kaivalyam it is said in our shastras he does it as a leela and uh, the amount of effort bhagavan takes for that is taken as uh, the amount of effort we take to actually breathe out you see breathe in is an active process breathing out is a passive process we actually need to spend no energy to even breathe out so where great mahatmas including vyasa bhagavan says that it uh, the amount of uh, effort bhagavan takes for all these is like us breathing which is natural which is automatic especially breathing out takes no energy at all no effort at all that is the greatness of bhagavan's uh, doing a job yet not doing it at all and puriya dirukum second uh, meaning is even though bhagavan is the only cause of this universe yet it is not very easily understandable by us we are not able to understand it fully and bhagavan does the job of creating sustaining and dissolving this universe but he does not put himself before his creation he hides behind his creation even when we paint a small picture we like to put our name below that picture to say this is drawn by so and so painter but bhagavan being the greatest painter using all the wonderful colors of his divine palette he has painted this whole universe but nowhere in any corner of the universe as he signed saying art by bhagavan he has not signed and uh, why because bhagavan is in the background he allows his job or his cause or his effect which is a universe to be in the foreground swami vivekananda very beautifully says the reason why there is order in the universe reason why things are happening very good in this universe is bhagavan has put his work before him and uh, bhagavan is trying to teach us a lesson that if we put our work before what we are then the work will be perfect it will be truly a service to human kind etc the moment we start signing the work with our individuality then what happens is the work uh, gets corrupted so puriyad irukum because bhagavan likes to be hidden he is telling uddhava uddhava i don't know about other jeevas but when it comes to me the paramatma paroksham mamacha priyam uddhava my intelligence which is vedas is parokshavado vedoyam veda mata also does not directly talk about bhagavan she does not directly show any path she shows it in a very indirect way paroksha way and the bhagavan says i also like to be hidden only i don't like to actually show myself before everybody and so he is telling uddhava paroksham mamacha priyam it's my nature to be out from the glare of all these uh, you know normal people etc and that's why puriyadurkam because bhagavan chooses to hide himself behind his creation and we are so much drawn by the creation 
that we don't even pause to even uh, think uh, maybe the creator's imagination is fantastic and uh, since he does not show himself before the creation we are not able to uh, clearly see that uh, bhagavan is the cause of this universe the sole cause of his universe and so puriyadirkum we can't understand how he is doing all that or muttolil purindum puriyadirkum na i we don't understand two things how bhagavan creates we don't understand who that bhagavan is also we don't understand so we don't understand neither the creator nor his wonderful action of creating sustaining and dissolving how he does not possible for us to even think in brahma sutra vashya our adi shankara bhagavat pada is in all when he uh, sees janmadya se yathahan there is a sutra what it means is that uh, which uh, which is the cause for the creation and cause for uh, the sustenance and dissolution of the universe that is what is the supreme truth that is what is bhagavan our uh the one who wrote the commentary uh, bhagavat padal says imagine how many million jeevas are there in this world and million and a billion why billion trillion why trillion zillion yeah na jeeva na right from bacteria to the highest form of life which is supposed to be us all of us are living na bhagavan it seems make sure everybody's perfect karma is always following only that soul even though karma was done in last janma now i have taken a different form last janma i might have been an elephant last janma i might have been a farmer in uttar pradesh but now last janma karma follows me correctly here and bhagavan no makes no mistake at all in spite of the zillions of jeevas whatever karma the jeeva has done for zillion years correct and he, he correlates that with everybody and he is saying, imagine that and he says, he gets into Samadhi. How he is doing all that we can't understand. And I'll give you a small example. Uh, once our Swamiji was saying that early in the morning, I also spend some time to think about all those who knowingly, unknowingly, expressly or implicitly are doing the work of Krishna. whether it is uh, chanting the name or spreading the divine name or doing their might to do krishna's work you see and uh, then uh, the list was growing isn't it there are so many lakhs of devotees isn't it? so once we ask swami ji during one of his uh, you know private moments how do you remember so many people you know what he said for people like you you can remember or have only one thought at a time that's all you can do when you remember tom you can't uh, remember jerry avladha but for mahatmas in a, in the in the same time they have the capacity to remember fondly or by the way bless them which he won't tell but that's what it means thousands of people at any given point of time in mahatma can do that how they do that puriyad bhagwan varike me povenda how it is happening puriyad and uh, forget uh, muttolil of all these things na our own body function supposed to be ours na uh, how does this all this happen very interesting stuff happens how it all happens not till now we have not solved the mystery of the body na fully we know a little mechanism here and there but we are not able to figure it out fully so when the microcosm of a cell one cell uh, we are not able to understand how this is working this way and we know the mechanism but we don't know why etc microcosm of one cell is as much a mystery as a macrocosm of the whole cosmos you see uh, microcosm forget self one atom still we are trying to figure out what is it what is it actually happening we are not able to fully figure that out which is a microcosm of an atom of a subatomic particle we are still trying to find out figure out and imagine the conglomerations of such a small little particles in this big universe and bhagavan is creating sustaining dissolving na how can we understand we will never understand why ada bhagavan is bhagavan jeeva is a jeeva and the bhagavan has made it as an eternal mystery why he is doing all that how he is doing maybe we'll come closer and closer and closer to some mechanisms but we can never figure out this greatest puzzle of life fully 
we can never figure out the greatest puzzle of cosmology fully in up with am bhagwan has kept he has given limits for everything and we have a limit in our intellect so puri aad irukum and if somebody is understanding the limit of intellect that person is called intelligent you see a intelligent person not only knows about the capacity of the various uh, uh, you know uh, capabilities and faculties he has he also understands the limitations uh, and that is what's called intelligence na knowing what i can and what uh, i'm not able to right now and that is why our swami ji very beautifully put even though muttolil purindum puriyadirukkum mudalva even though bhagavan you are doing all these three acts of creation sustenance and the solution mudalva nobody can understand you who can understand even the people who came down with bhagavan as his own kinsmen in dwaraka they could not understand they were with them they were not normal humans they came down with bhagavan all devas and they lived with bhagavan not one year to his 120 years they lived and uddhav swami is crying in spite of living with bhagavan sri krishna for 120 years even they could not understand the greatness and absolutely who bhagavan is and they thought maybe bhagavan is a little more intelligent of our clan that's what they thought it seems and he said it is like all the fishes looking at the moon rays reflecting on the waves of a river to think that that moon is also one of the fishes moon enga irukku fish enga irukku can fish imagine coming out of water even for a second and where is moon it never was in the water you see fantastic example given by our uh, uddhavasma another example is like a fish thinking that the boat which is taking so many people across the shore is also another fish Uh, our uh, the people who lived with bhagwan sri krishna could understand his greatness what to talk about normal mortals like this puriyad mudalva sharanam one, one we can understand how he is a sarva sakta how he is he actually using his power to create more than that even before power how we see all knowing to create such intricate universe all that whether we know or not one theriyu nam because of guru kripa we know one thing sarva sharanyan we know na that once we surrender to bhagavan he will take care of us that is the only jnana we need to know it in full we either we understand sarva vyapitvam or not we don't know in a sarva vyapina then there are a lot of questions which are still not answered by uh, siddhantis sarva shaktatvam uh, sarva antaryamitvam all that i don't have to know one thing i should know sarva sharanyan which means the moment i go and surrender to bhagavan supported by my guru bhagavan is ready to accept the surrender and then mukti ki vittidva he is ready to liberate us this jnana is the only jnana we really need 100% rest puriyave puriyathu and thankfully bhagavan came down of ramachandra prabhu narasimha swami bhagavan sri krishna and vamana bhagavan etc to show whether you understand other aspects of divinity or not which we can't janma karma chame divya velam puriyad one thing we can understand maam ekam sharanam vraja that we can understand so if you surrender immediately he opens the door of mukti and swami ji is going to define that surrender even more practically right now as a first step more first step itself mahavishwasa surrender is not possible na let us start with alpa sharanagati alpa sharanagati means not even with 100% faith not even with three karana faith which means not even with the complete surrender of our body mind and speech of the three at least surrender one alpa nana one out of three which is speech and even while we surrender in speech what we have to do ragava tavasmi i belong to you ragava even that you don't need ragava or just chant the name and slowly shipram bhavati dharmatma then he will make us a dharmatma very soon and give us sashvat shanti which is mukti hmm? name bhakta pranashya if you chant my divine name you shall not be forsaken said bhagavan na? so that is the reason why our swami ji in this first mangala charanam 
has condensed all the 30 verses because uh, this is Kali Dharmam. And Dharma means the path to Bhagavan. Dharma means, uh, you know, the, the, the way, the path. In a way, it is a way. And the path has to lead to Bhagavan. Bhagavan showed all the Dharma, Karma Marga, Dhyana Marga, um, uh, Bhakti Marga, everything he showed. Huh? And Jnana Vichara Marga, everything he showed. Finally, Sarva Dharman Paridhyajya Mamekam Sharanam Rajaha. And Piriyavachan Pillai writes, even to do that Sharanagati, Mahaviswasam Aridagayale, five, 500, 600 years back, sitting in Sri Rangam Divya Kshetram, that Mahatma is writing, even for Sharanagati, which Bhagavan is saying the last uh, retort, Vishwasam has to be there, na? So, finally, Mudalva Sharanam Nale, Mudalva, Ade Sharanam. Mudalva equal Sharanam. Yena Nama, you see. So, when I say Adi Mulame, Dina Sharanite, Bhagavan has taken the Nama as Sharan. So, that's why he didn't say Mudalva, Dinda Vidila. Mudalvanaki Sharanam Salala is a Nama, Kirtana. When you say Rama, Govinda, that's what Draupadi is saying. Draupadi didn't say Govinda Niki Sharanam, Govinda. When you add an A there, it is called Sambodhanam, which means calling somebody. That is what is Nam Sankirtan. So here, our Swamiji is now going to conclude singing to Bhagavan, saying Mudalva, like Gajendra Alvar, Anekandra Aru Saida Mayale. When Gajendra Alvar said, let the primal cause protect me, he didn't even utter the name of Bhagavan. Only after Bhagavan came, he said, Narayana Akila Guru. Yeah, yeah. This uh, stuti was nirvisesham. Bhagavadam says, na? Tamtad vadartam upavadnita nirvisesham. Nirvisesham, that uh, Gajendra Alvar shouted, na? Bhagavan took it as Sharanagati and came running, na? Likewise, our Swamiji here he is saying, not Mudalva Sharanam, Mudalva, which means Nama Sankirtanam. He is shouting out the name of Bhagavan, Adi Mulame, Jagat Karanane, Sarvant, Sarva Karak, Sarva Karanam, Namo Namaste, Akila Karanaya, Nishkaranaya, Adbhuta Karanaya. Mudalva was enough. Tavasmi na Sharan. Bhagavan is saying, Mudalva itself is Sharan. Don't worry, I'll take care. Rest. Bhagavan will complete the rest. Adinala is saying, Muttojil Purindum Puriyadirukkum Mudalva has become Vachika Sharanagati. And immediately Bhagavan is completing Mukti Ki Vittidavai. Now that you have promised me, when you do Nama Sankirtana, certainly Keshava Kirtana will take us up to Tam Namami Harim Param. So this whole uh, Mangala Charanam uh, uh, very subtly talks about Nama Sankirtana, which results in Purna Sharanagati by Bhagavad Kripa during the right time. Even if we don't do properly, we do Alpa Sharanagati of just crying out Rama, Krishna, Govinda, Hare Rama. Bhagavan completes our path by giving us the Bhagyam, by giving us the pakuam, which is maturity to Purna Sharanagati, even if it is here and there, Bhagavan says, since you have this wonderful uh, uh, satsanga, acharya, sambandham, I will take care of you. Matsmarami. I will take care of you. I will remember you. Uh, and Nayami uh, Paramam Gatim and the Charma Sloka. So here, our Swamiji is saying, Muttojil Purindum Puriyadirkum. Mudalva Sharanam. Undi para mukti ki vittiduvai. Kindly show me the actual doors of uh, moksham so that the entire samsara sagaram, I shall never come back. You only have to take me. Uh, like you have seen a karavalambanam, Lakshmi Narasimha, uh, mamade, ta, mamadehi karavalambanam. Give me your. Uh, hold of your hand so that I am pulled out of samsara. Karamaruli kapa yendramari mukti ki vitti duvai. You have promised in Bhagavad Gita, Teshamaham samudharta mrutyu samsara sagara bhavami nachirat partha mayi aveshita chetasa. And since you promised to our Arjuna 
that if you have taken even the smallest step of nama yoga where no other yoga i am not able to do now na if i done only nama yoga i have done krishna rama govinda krishna rama govinda. have you done it with purna sharanagati i don't know have you done with full faith i don't know whatever little faith i have i mustered it and shouted but as our swami ji said aanai kandre aruls adinyao mudalva sharanam that day when this elephant shouted out adi mula me you came and protected respecting its naam sankirtana respecting its sharanagati na likewise i am also doing sharanagati for all these people on their behalf you please ensure moksha for all of them hmm? and that is the beauty of the first stanza the more shorter and laconic the words of our swami ji are the more deeper they are which is the reason why we took quite a while yesterday to discuss only two of these first shlokams but today we'll go a little fast because it is we have to cover a lot hmm? and then he is starting the kali dharma undiya now kali dharma undiya is dharma sthapanam our swami ji is doing here when you have to do dharma sthapanam which is you have to show a path to people obviously we have to sh- because many paths are there some paths are not as per the vedic paths avaidika path are there some paths are vedic paths but then it is not i am not fit for that path some paths are vedic paths even if i think i am fit for the path time is not fit for that path the current circumstances social conditions etc may not make that path fit for all the people so our swami ji has to establish uh, he has to establish a path so that we are very clear about it and that is what is called katha anupe you know because is a shastra i can tell you light meaning that everybody knows the translation pricha purinjiram but i want to show you the depth of shastra in this katha a little bit and then we'll go to all this it's called katha in sanskritam katha means something to be informed something to be expressed not just story so wherever there are uh a conclusions to be drawn in the path of dharma it is called a katha and typically we have four types of katha okay be with me that is the beauty of our indian logic our swami ji used to say swami vivekananda came to america to talk about vedanta and he had very good success no doubt if he had also talked about our nyaya shastra as a nyaya shastra he is like a jewel on the crown of indian knowledge nyaya shastra nyaya shastra na logic huh? and so here people used logic to establish religious paths it was not just uh, i am telling you so believe it in any level huh? and there is uh, four types of debates for us to establish uh, or discussions if you please four types of discussions or four types of katha as per our nyaya shastra the first type of katha is called samvada katha samvada you say no samvada and a romba typical word used in samvadam you all will remember om tat sat iti shrimad bhagavad gita shu upanishad shu brahma vidyayam yoga shastre shri krishna arjuna samvade samvadam na technical term is samvadam means a guru explaining a path to a shishya is called samvadam samvadam means the shishya has surrendered to the guru and the shishya wants the knowledge from the guru and the guru is giving that knowledge using logic which is in line with vedas not random logic not random uh, you know nyaya and our arjuna was also asked by bhagavan bhagavan kept on saying as per this is what uh, vedavadis are saying brahmavadis say like that arjuna this is what i taught to by uh, vivaswan i taught to the first manu and he is telling all the shastra vishayam to arjuna answering his question at times using examples at times using logic at times showing consequence all these things he is doing na this is what is called samvadam most of the conversations why most all between a guru and a shishya is sweet like that samadam was sweet at why because there is eagerness i want to really know i have come with an absolute open mind i don't know and i surrender to my guru and guru gives me this knowledge called samvadam 
And the second type of Katha is called Vada Katha. Vada Katha happens between two equals. Now, Guru and Sishya can never be equal. Vada Katha is between two equal people who want to actually explore and understand the truth by discussion, by uh, debate, discussion. Now, both of them are very open. They want to understand. And, uh, you know, if they, they are willing to actually correct if they are okay. Uh, this is what is my way of looking at the truth using, uh, using say, for example, Bhagavad Gita. This is what I interpret from Bhagavad Gita, etc. And then uh, the other person says, no, no, this is not how you interpret. This is how you interpret. And the first person is ready to change because the person, both are open. Uh, the, the Samvada Katha is Guru Sishya. Vada Katha means between equals. And then the third type of Katha is called Jalpa Katha. Jalpa Katha means both of them are clear what the truth is. And both don't want to change their position. They are bent upon trying to convert the other person. Now, if you are there. <laughs> so this is called Jalpa Katha. So they are not, both sides are not open. If one side is open, it becomes Samvadam. You see? And if they are not equals. Both sides are clear. For example, the debates which happen between Siddhantis. Huh? For example, uh, the debate between Dvaitis and Advaitis, etc. Huh? Is typically a Jalpa Katha because both of them come with a very clear idea. Idha Satyam. You see? And then they debate. Huh? Generally, a conclusion won't be reached. Our Swamiji said, if... Uh, one philosophy was clearly the right one as per the human intelligence. Debate should have stopped 200 years back. Na? He's saying this debate, whether this philosophy or this Siddhanta or that Advaita, Vishta Advaita, Advaita, etc. This debate will be endless because And then the fourth one is very common, which we generally use in South India called Vidanda Katha, you see. When people are stubborn, they say, Vidanda Vadam Pannade. Well, technical, Nyaya Shastra terms we are using in our day-to-day -day life. Vidanda Katha means, I don't have a stance. I have come here to just show you are wrong. That's all. What is, what is right? I don't know. I just came here to poke holes into your discussion. The all type of Katha. Generally, people use Vidandam and Jalpam to silence their opponent when that person seems to be a little caustic. And then, for open-minded people, they do Vada Katha. Now, why I am telling you all that is, you have to remember, Kali Dharma Undiyar is not a Vada Katha or a Jalpa Katha or a Vidanda Katha. It is a Samvada Katha. This was not given to Nastikas. It is given to people who are interested in Astikam. It is given to devotees of a Satsangam so that they can be more clear and more focused in their path of Nama Sankirtana. So this is not a debate grantham for people who don't accept Vedas. Because after the first four verses, rest is all under the basic presumption that you accept Vedas as authority. So here it's a Samvadam. Like you have Bhagavan Uvacha and Arjuna Uvacha. This is all our Sri Guru Vacha. Hmm? And he, our Guru Maharaj is telling it to people who want to really know more about our Dharma, people who are truly interested to grow spiritually, people who are truly interested to go, grow in our Sanatana Dharma, approaching our Guru and saying, please clarify Dharma for me. Like Arjuna went and asked Bhagavan Sri Krishna, I'm confused now. I don't know whether to fight or not. What is right? What is wrong? I'm confused. Show me. Likewise, when uh, the unspoken questions of so many devotees knock the door of this wonderful uh, uh, room of mercy called our Bhagavan, uh, I mean, our Gurunatha's heart, the door opened and the cool breeze of these 30 wonderful verses came out. You see? And uh, these 30 wonderful verses are Samvada Kata, which means like how Arjuna with tremendous respect of Pariprashnena Sevaya. When he went with absolute humility to understand what Dharma is, Bhagavan used uh, the Samvadam to tell this is what is Dharma, clarified him, clarified him. None of his questions was to challenge Krishna, but to actually challenge his doubt only. 
so that he can be more clarified and each question of arjuna was directed towards how can i better understand and embrace dharma you see that's why our vyasa bhagavan very beautifully put after every uh, chapter krishna arjuna samvade hmm? bhakti yoga naam dvadasho adhyaya yeah. so here when you have this samvadam you we have a very proper structure in giving that dharma and establishing that dharma i think in english uh, it is called uh, syllogism or something like that for people who know a little bit of uh, uh, you know logic i am just giving you that any logic any reasoning any conclusion which has to finally come to a conclusion now this is what is the path it takes five steps first one is called a proposition called pratigna the second one is called hetu showing some evidence huh? Huh? and showing this is what it is so i am right you see third one is called udaharanam so give some examples huh? to give them examples is related to the evidence which i am presenting to you so that you are convinced and the fourth one is called upanayam or upanaya which is uh, application of that example in line with the evidence so that you are very convinced and then finally comes nirnayam nirnayam na conclusion this is what it is you see so you go in this path our swami ji has followed this perfectly pratigna lend aarambich pratigna enadu muttoril purindum puriyadirkum mudalvasharanam undi pare mukti ki vittiduva und pratigna the pratigna or proposition here is that bhagavan who is the cause of this universe its uh, creation sustenance and dis- dissolution that bhagavan once we surrender to that bhagavan in a way which i am going to tell you only he can free us from samsara hence two things are very clear we have to first of all go and surrender to bhagavan second of all the very purpose of why we are here is to find a way for mukti so is all proposition and here our swami ji is going to slowly give us hetu or evidence you know reasons he is going to reason it out for us using vedas only not just intellect mahan galla they will touch only vedas and speak and even if it appears as if it is all plain logic na it is vedic logic bhagavatic logic and so with this five steps he is showing all that in archery and it is so done in a very simple way that we don't even understand the structure behind it you see at times some things are very intricately constructed but it looks very beautiful and simple you enjoy that more than enough but to see the genius of uh, the structure behind is also a, a enjoyment layer which is what we are trying to do now so in the 30 verses i will quickly tell you how these 30 verses are managed 30 verses uh, are can be split into uh, first 10 and the uh, last uh, 20 so now what happens is the first two verses is the non vedic paths of atheism and uh, what we call a sankhya madam where they say everything is nature first that is refuted huh? and then in the next three verses what is called as uh, bhagavan can be experienced in the possibility has to be injected in if somebody feels i don't even know how this is possible now will you listen to the fifth verse sixth verse so it is called sambhavana buddhi per sambhavika mudiyum it's possible so our swami ji is now slowly opening our uh, hard core grace proof head with a small window saying it is possible to experience bhagavan bhagavan ota irkam pa first two to verses says bhagavan there is somebody called bhagavan he exists uh, he is not a non existing entity he exists and then let him exist if it is like can, i can never realize him whether he exists or not makes no difference to me na so our swami ji in the next three verses he is showing that bhagavan can be experienced it is possible it is not that you are totally away from bhagavan and so he is saying you can talk to him you can hear him you can uh, see him and uh, he he is showing that bhagavan can be attained so first two verses rejecting atheism 
and rejecting uh, Sankhya philosophy, which is what is called as naturalism, if at all such things exist. And then the next three slokas talks about Nambikai, that Bhagavan can be seen. Little intellect, we should have a little uh, idea that yes, it's possible for you to see Bhagavan. How you can see Bhagavan? Not with your eyes. Are, I can't see with Bhagavan with my eyes, then how can I see him? Na? Or Sambhavana, he says. You see without eyes also, na? like a dream. Likewise, Bhagavan can also be seen. Sambhavana, it's possible. And then, can I hear Bhagavan? You can't hear with your ears. But then the voice of conscience in your heart, you can hear. Na? When you're about to do something wrong, something in you tells, don't do it. Even though what you do may be beneficial in the short run, something in us says, don't do it. Huh? That voice is called voice of conscience. And conscience has a very lovely term in Tamil and possibly in uh, Hindi also. We call it as the manasakshi, the witness of the mind. We say anything which witnesses the mind has to be divine. Na? So the sound from this witness of the mind, which is called antaryami, is the sound or the uh, voice of Bhagavan. So Sambhavan, possible. You are listening. Don't tell you. You can. You are listening. Only you don't know it is Bhagavan's voice. So he's showing that. And then... The next three verses is what is called as the final, if I can use the term, it's called Prama. This is what is the object or whatever, the lack of a good word, huh? to be realized. It is now you have to realize, it's showing. And then how do I realize it? Now it's called Pramanam. Pramanam, now with what will I realize Bhagavan? Very simple. If I have a desk before me, how will I know? How will I get the knowledge about this desk? I open my eyes, I see it enough. It's called direct perception. Pratyaksha Brahman. I see it, so it is here. How do you know that somebody is playing violin in the next room? I hear it, so they are playing. So Pratyaksha. Huh? And then there is one way of uh, analyzing or rather uh, knowing. The second way of knowing for humans is what is called as inference. If I have seen a smoke and fire together, huh, for example, and I've seen smoke and fire together many times. So now I know wherever there is smoke, there has to be fire. So next time when I see only a smoke coming out from a house, I don't shout smoke, smoke. What do I shout? Fire, fire. Why? Because I've inferred that this cause and effect relationship I have established over time. Hence, when I see the effect, I infer the cause. Na? It is called inference or anumanam. So we are normal uh, science a normal life we can lead with these two, no problem. But when it comes to divinity, these two are not enough. Na? So I need a third source of knowledge. In uh, Sanskritam, it's called Pramanam. And we use that word also in normal place. How do you say he did it? What is the Pramana for that we ask? Na? Pramana means what is the authority on which I have got this knowledge? What is the source of my knowledge? Is it I saw it myself? Or I inferred it? I derived it with my intellect? Or what is it? So the next three shlokas, our Swamiji is showing, for this type of divinity, either the path or Bhagavan, Vedas are our Pramana. What is the Prama? What is that knowledge which we are going to get? Knowledge about God. And that knowledge about God is shown in the three shlokas. How do I get that knowledge? What is the Pramana for that is shown in the next three shlokas? And then, what are the various paths in our Vedas is the next three slokas. Our Karma Marga, Yoga Marga, Jnana Marga, etc. And then, in the next nine slokas, Kali Dharma Undi Arliya, our Swamiji has photographed the state of Kali when it comes to spirituality. He is not talking about the politics or economics of this world. You see, he is talking about the state of Dharma in this world right now. So that we understand Dharma Specifically, Kali Dharma. And for us to be convinced about Kali Dharma, we need to actually do Pariksha of this world. Na? So our Swamiji does the job for us. Nine slokas, he talks about the state of Kali Yoga. How Kali has Sarva Sadhana Bhadaka. It has clearly crippled all divine sadhanas. It has crippled all divine means of attaining Bhagavan, except one. You see, only one path has been left untouched. Because that is the beauty of that path. This path can finish Kali. So obviously Kali can't even come close to it. Hmm? 
and the last nine shlokas talks about the kali yoga status pathittu and the last nine shlokas talks about vairagya dharma i know <laughs> i know that i know kali dharma naam sankirtan but i have to get the motivation and inspiration to do it na for that at least to that level i should get that vairagyam vairagyam means a little dispassion vairagyam means a little knowledge also about what my status is what is that i am doing with my life and why am i here in the first place my reason the atha why am i here and so our swami ji spends nine shlokas trying to instill little gyanam a little vairagyam so that we get a little thirst for the path which is going to reveal in the last shloka which is the concluding shloka which says nama me gati now for people who ask why should i chant maha mantra in kali yuga 29 shlokas are going to explain that you see step by step by step by step so that shreyo hi gyanam abhyasa gyana dhyanam visishyate dhyanat karma palatyagaha tyagas chantir anantaram instead of just doing the abhyasa do that abhyasa along with gyanam about it why should i do it and why should i not try anything else all this that's that's you no know, it's inbuilt na why should i go in this route or route when you go in this route then what happens you say you say this is how you why should i not go in other routes <laughs> because it won't take you there because other routes are very long winded and so once you are clear about both then you won't have a doubt otherwise would have maybe i should have taken the other road ne pindru po we will never go like that and that is the beauty of the 30 shlokas first two shlokas nastika matam which is the atheism and the 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 religion of naturalism where everything is nature and the next three shlokas our swami ji is saying that which we need to realize is established and a little bit of faith that it can be realized is beautifully instilled you can see him you can hear him don't worry Uh, raise your perspective and then next to three shlokas to realizing what is the authority source of my knowledge on what have this dharma been based at vedam pramanam veda pramanam shastraikya gamyam only by shastras we can get him and then he talks about the other paths genuine paths in the shastras you see there are other parts na like karma marga is there gnana marga is there and then you also have uh, the marga of uh, raja yoga etc that margas are also shown and after talking about veda so obviously these are great margas but are we fit is the time right or is the time uh, conducive for me to follow these paths is discussed and then the next nine shlokas what we already know about kali retracing that to show there is only one path left for us you see and the last nine uh, shlokas except the penultimate one uh, penultimate nine shlokas talk about vairagya for us to get that inspiration to go in the path we have to remind ourselves na which means i have to free myself from three things na which we keep repeating week and week day i need to allocate some time for this i need to allocate some energy for this i need to allocate some attention for this for that i need to free of other things yes <laughs> how can i get the time energy uh, all limited resources na for me to focus my time energy attention on the path which is kali dharma path which is the dharma of naam sankirtan i have to take a little bit from other areas which has been occupying my time energy and attention na that is what is called vairagyam vairagya na you immediately don't say i become bitter with the world i am running away no i am now getting clarity about my life and i am trying to get my time energy and attention in the path which takes me to the goal i need to stop doing some things more rigorously or i need to reduce doing things so that i can get the time energy and attention and for that nine shlokas for vairagya finally conclusion and uh, conclusion is always like bhagavatam tasmat huh? and our swami ji is saying now that uh, when you consider all the 29 shlokas here including the first one so 30 above 
one thing comes becomes very clear for us nama me gati i say for us nama is the gati do you see how he started how is ending he started with nama mundre podu maam and he ends with saying namam dhan gati vera edhum povum mudiyad you see anga podu maam inga povadendra so here he starts with nama alone is enough to show the greatness of the nam in the end he concludes by saying nama is our gati hari namaiva me gati there is no other gati for us this is the overall structure of our wonderful kali dharma undiyar now that we understand the whole 30 shlokas let us start with the first one 